People, we are in the end days. God is saying to you, number your days so you become wise. Don't waste time, people. Don't waste time. He says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. God is saying, in the midst of the evil days all around us, you can actually buy back the time by Kairos. How do you do it? By being filled with the Spirit. When you're being filled with the Spirit, you will understand what the will of the Lord is. You will walk as wise. What's the point of having a long life? It's a miserable life. There's a better way. Hi, this is Joseph Prince. Thanks for tuning in. I just want you to know that you are able to watch this sermon for free today because of the support of our gospel partners. So to all our partners, thank you for making a difference. As you watch this video, feel free to navigate to different points using our chapter headings. Please also leave a comment to share what you have received and how you have been touched by today's sermon. Be blessed as you feed on God's Word today. Praise the Lord. And for all the young people in the house as well, are you ready for some good news? Praise the Lord. We have some testimonies to share with you. And uh, the first testimony comes to us from a sister from India. And she writes that I'm 28 years old this year and I'm working as a doctor in India. I grew up in a Christian household, but I never felt connected to God. That is so sad. You grew up in a Christian household, but never felt connected to God. Additionally, she says, I was diagnosed with diabetes. A couple of years back, I suffered my first panic attack, accompanied by depression. I fell into a downward spiral of sadness and self-pity, and it led me to self-mutilation and even contemplating ending my life. I became convinced that meeting Jesus was the only way to achieve peace in my life, and she means meeting Jesus face to face in heaven. So I attempted suicide, but miraculously, I survived. Later, I left my job and went home to live with my parents. Over the next year, I began watching all of Pastor Prince's sermons. That's a lot of sermons, wow. And I'm happy to share that he has opened my eyes to Jesus all over again. Over time, the Lord healed my heart and I feel so close to him, to Jesus that is. He delivered me from depression and now I live every day to worship him. Not only that, all my diabetic symptoms have disappeared and I'm resuming my work once again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for delivering this sister from depression and diabetes. Hallelujah. Right, the next few testimonies we have are from uh, three Sundays ago. When you, when you, if you're in church, you'll remember that pastor all right, ministered with a strong healing anointing and we heard many testimonies shared live right, at our service. And uh, some of uh, these brothers and sisters have written in. So here are these testimonies. Uh, the first testimony comes to us from a sister from Florida in the United States. And she writes that, I watch New Creation Church online every Sunday. On Sunday the 23rd of uh, July 2023, as Pastor Prince began to preach, he shared a word of healing regarding a liver condition. During that time, my stomach had been hurting a lot and my doctor had recommended a computerized tomography or CT scan for my stomach and liver. Hence, I received the word of healing for myself as she was watching New Creation Church online, the online service. That very week, I underwent the scan and everything turned out well. My condition also improved. Thank you, Pastor Prince, for sharing that word for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, next testimony uh, from a sister from Singapore. She writes that recently, I've been experiencing a combination of menstrual cramps and a sore tummy, aching almost constantly with varying degrees of intensity. On Saturday, the 22nd of July, I had a dull ache and when evening came, it became so painful, I had to bend over and hold onto my abdomen. The next morning, my tummy was still slightly sore, but I decided to attend church at Marina Bay Sands Ballrooms. And all our brothers and sisters at Marina Bay Sands shout, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And during praise and worship, the pain in my abdomen intensified, making me feel increasingly uncomfortable. During the service, Pastor Prince called for healing for stomach pain. He mentioned that the person had been experiencing pain that became more acute the previous evening and it progressively increased as the night went on. That exactly mirrored what I had gone through the day before. When Pastor Prince prayed for stomach pains, I simply said, Yes, God. And immediately, I truly mean instantly, the pain vanished. I, went to, I want to praise the Lord and thank Jesus for loving me so deeply 
and taking care of me. Praise the Lord for this beautiful testimony. Wow. All right, next one, a sister from Singapore as well. And she writes that, I just returned from overseas where I experienced swollen feet due to water retention, making it difficult to stand or squat for extended periods. I had also had been having pain in my right back or the right side of her back. On Sunday, the 23rd of July, 2023, I decided to attend the 11.30 a.m. online service at home. Uh, the way she wrote it, I thought she decided to attend the 11.30 service, but the online service at home. Right? During the service, Pastor Prince prayed for those with pain in their left shoulder, right back, and swollen feet. Remarkably, after the session, the swelling in both my feet subsided tremendously, and the pain in my right back was completely gone. I'm grateful that Jesus didn't forget about me and that His healing power reached me even as I tuned in from home. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Pastor Prince. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the final testimony is from a brother from Singapore. Finally, with a brother writing in. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother, for writing in. And he writes, A couple of months ago, I had a fall while playing football, getting ready for the new season, the new football season, right, resulting in scrapes on my left knee, shoulder blade, and elbow. While my knee healed, I continued to feel pain in my shoulder blade and elbow. On Sunday, the 23rd of July, 2023, during a time of ministering in church, Pastor Prince called out for, left shoulder, for those with left shoulder blade pain. I was stunned because it was so specific. I received the healing and placed the hand over the affected area. Immediately, I noticed an improvement. The pain I would usually feel when rotating my shoulder was completely gone. I was amazed. However, my elbow was still hurting and it was more intense than the pain in my shoulder. So I prayed and I told the Lord about it. At that time, Pastor Prince was praying for other conditions. Then suddenly, he mentioned that God was healing elbows. I was beyond stunned and completely flabbergasted. One of my favorite words in the English vocabulary. <laughs> flabbergasted, wow. Gradually, the pain in my elbow began to dissipate until it vanished entirely. I had received double healing. This experience left me in awe because there was no possible scientific explanation to it. All I could do was to give thanks to God. And church, let us give thanks to God for these beautiful testimonies. And please join me as we welcome Pastor Prince. I want to share with you something that uh, actually, like what I sh shared just now, you see God bringing everything for these past weeks. He's been speaking to us, speaking to us. And um, every uh, seasons in life, when you come to church, God has a rhema word for you. There's a strong conviction I have. If I have a, a, past, a pastor's and minister's seminar that I'm teaching, I will always tell them, look for the rhema word. You find Pastor Prince always saying this often, amen, the word in season. Because you look at the Bible, there's so much in the Bible to teach from. So much in the Bible. Matthew, all right, to Revelation. Which one? What is the word that God has? And the Bible says, who is that wise and faithful steward who knows how to give food in due season? Jesus said. It's a very small parable. He says, uh, who is that wise? And, it's not even a parable, actually. It's an it's a, it's a expression, an illustration. Jesus says when he comes again, you know. But before that, who is that wise and faithful steward who can give to the household food in due season? So the word due season means food for the right occasion. Amen? So you all know that uh, you all don't like to eat the same food every day, right or not? Right? And that's why you want some variety. Some of you tell your, your wife, you know, I, I miss eating that. And then she prepares it for you. And what a joy, that food in season. What a joy. Am I right? Amen? Okay, we got some uh, honest people in front here. All right? <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Food in season is wonderful. The Bible says, a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Amen. Book of Proverbs, a word spoken in due season. Sometimes a word spoken is not in due season. It's as, as, as bad as heresy sometimes. Amen. Because it is not said in due season. So I endeavor to bring forth the word. But it's like, it's like for the past weeks, if you notice, God is just causing everything that's been taught to come to this place where I'm going to share with you today how a Christian looks like. A, a victorious Christian, a blessed Christian, um, a whole and healthy Christian, 
a Christian in the sight of God that's pleasing Him? What, how does it look like in this world? How does it look like? Amen? You'll find that God brings everything together that we have learned. And I, I just want to share this with you because it's going to bless you. Are you ready? Yes. All right, you always know that God's ways are contrary to the ways of the world. The world says, all right, push yourself forward. Jesus says, humble yourself and God will exalt you. The world says, come on, push yourself upwards. Exalt your own self. No one else will do it for you. And Jesus says, you humble yourself and God will exalt you. I tell you, God's hand is bigger than any boss, any corporation, any company, any, anyone else. Amen. You don't have to please men. You only have to please God. Amen. Praise the Lord. In fact, I read the other day that in, in the book of Psalms that promotion doesn't come from the north, neither does it come from, sorry, it doesn't come from the east or the west or the south. Amen. I just mentioned north. So north is not mentioned. North is not mentioned. It doesn't come from the east, from the west, from the south. Where does it come? North. Amen. Only God promotes. And God, when, when, men, when a man exalts, they can substitute you. You see that in football all the time. All right? They exalt you to a certain position. They observe you. You don't perform. They take you out. They replace you. They substitute you. Right? You get what I'm saying? When God exalts you, amen, He never, never substitute you. At the right time, the phrase, He will exalt you in due time. At the right time, He exalts you. Yes, Joseph might now be a slave in that household. And then another place, he's now in a dungeon. But in due time, when God exalts, wow, God exalts. Your trials are temporal. What you're going through right now is temporal. Your victory is long. In fact, there's a verse in Job that says, the triumphing of the old King James, the triumphing of the wicked is short but the righteous are joyful, rejoices continually. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How does a Christian look like? I'll give you a snapshot right now from the Bible. And you see how God is bringing all the messages we've been hearing these past weeks together in this message. Amen. Let's look at uh, Ephesians 5. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. People, we are in the end days. We're in the last days. You see all kinds of things happening around the world, right? If it's not famine, you know, it's not financial downturn, it is not uh, a collapse of uh, moral, uh, a moral uh, values that we hold dear in any civilized society. Look, the foundation blocks are the moral, the Ten Commandments actually is behind every successful modern nation. They believe in Judeo-Christian principles. Amen? The Ten Commandments especially. We still observe that outwardly. It cannot change your heart, but people are afraid to break it because there are consequences. Thou shalt not kill has a consequence. Amen? Murder has a consequence. Stealing has a consequence in every civilized nation. Amen. Can I be good amen, people? So, but, but the law cannot change our hearts. Only Jesus can. Only grace can. And the Bible says, in these last days, walk circumspectly. What does that mean? Walk accurately. The word circumspect means accurately. Don't waste time, people. Don't waste time. It says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. We see that now. We see it happening all over the world. The days are evil. God says to us, yes, do we see, just sit down there and say, days are evil, you know? I, I, I pity my children, you know? When, when I was born, it wasn't like this, but now his days are evil. It's very hard for them. Because, no, redeem the time. You know what's redeem? It means you buy. Amen. Snatch. Buy. Buy back the time. Buy back the time. Literally, the word redeem is to buy back the time. And the word time here is kairos. Kairos means what? Not just any, any old time, but fortunate time, opportunity, good moments, fortunate moments, okay, favorable moments. 
is called Kairos. I don't have to repeat that. There's a theme of our, uh, uh, this year in our church. Amen. Kairos. Praise the Lord. Say Kairos. So God is saying, in the midst of the evil days all around us, amen, it's all around us, God says, you can actually buy Kairos and have more days and moments with you, your family, your children, your future, amen. with your body, amen. You know, it's, it's not a Kairos moment when you go see a doctor or not. You know that you're not feeling well and all that, amen. Thank God for doctors and all that, but they, 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 they always tell me, I have one doctor who tell me, uh, I say, see you, he said, no. <laughs> don't, wish, don't wish for that, he said. And, 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 and that, that, that is a smart doctor. His, his uh, success is that you don't come and see him anymore. All right? Not because you go to somebody else, <laughs> but because the problem is no more. So the thing is this, you know, when, when, when uh, you, are, you are being summoned to the courts for something, all right? that you have uh, done wrong and you are being sued or whatever it is, that's an evil day. That's not a good day. That's not a good day. So the Bible says there are a lot of days that are evil around us, sick days and all that around us, I said. It doesn't say this evil days are ours. In fact, the Bible says uh, in another place, he that will love life and see good days. So I always tell people, you know, if God doesn't want us to say this, huh? Uh, and to see good days, right? Why did he tell us more than once? Once in the Old Testament and another time in the New Testament, if you want to enjoy life and see good days, refrain your tongue from evil. Amen. So God wants you to see good days. And yet the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 that finally you stand in the armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, singular. Whereas here, days are evil is plural. So for the believer, you have an evil day. It's a day where things are not happening the way you want it to happen. In fact, it is prolonging. The evil day can be a, a, a... But it's a day. God used the illustration of a day, not months, not years. Thank God. So for a believer, your evil season is a day. But your good days are plural. See good days. God wants you to see good days. Amen? So I, I believe... There are trials, I believe, in life. Just this, the fact that you are on this side of heaven and this earth is fallen, man is fallen, amen? There will be trials, there will be trials. But God is telling us, right, don't, don't keep on looking, have, having this uh, um, you know, uh, uh, persecution complex, having this adversity mentality that everything in life is an adversity. I gotta fight, I gotta fight, I gotta fight. I told you before about the type A personality, people who are, uh, they, they, they observe their diet, they, they, they're very careful about what they eat, they exercise a lot, but they are the type A personality, which means they are driven, driven by goals, deadlines, they are rushing, rushing here, rushing there, rushing, and then they are handling so many things, don't, not enough sleep and all that, but they observe what they eat, and they are uh, careful about you know, exercise and all that, and then one day you find they have heart attack. You're hearing more and more of this in these last days. All right? What's the problem? The problem is not in exercise. It's not in the food that they eat. They observe that carefully. It is the type A personality. And I don't know if you notice or not, but the world is getting to be a more and more stressful place. You know, this is an oasis of love. The church of Jesus Christ is an oasis of love. Amen. It's a place where you come and you replenish yourself at the feet of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says, walk circumspectly, not, not as fools. Stop wasting your time. Redeem your time. You know what the Bible says about your average years? It's like talking to modern men now. In Psalms 90, it says this, but I'm not, I said your average years. I shouldn't be saying that, but then you understand what I'm saying when I come uh, from the perspective, majority of people in our nation, majority of people in the world, they live under this, okay? Majority, 70 to 80 years old. The days of our lives are 70 years. By reason of strength, if they are strong, they are 80 years. Yet, their boast is only labor and sorrow. It's soon cut off and we fly away. How far are you to 70? How far are you to 80? Oh, Pastor, early in the morning, you discourage us already. <laughs> All right? So the good news is, don't you agree that this is what the world believes in? Yeah, right? I mean, not the beliefs in, it's a fact. They'll tell you that roughly around there. 
you know, medical insurance and all that, they, will tell, they, they won't invest more than once you are about 70, 80, they, they know, right? In Singapore, not just in Singapore, all the modern countries you go to today where, where there's even uh, good medical um, provisions in that country, people still, still live around this age. Am I right? We know with long life, I'll satisfy him. I mean, you're, you're well taught. But you know that this is not well taught outside. It's well taught here. I hope you better appreciate what you have you know, in this new creation church. Amen? We keep on banging back home. right? <laughs> Always, with long life, will I satisfy you. So this is Psalms what? Class. We live in Psalms 91, right? So Psalm 91 says what? With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now you see the word satisfy is a very interesting word. I'll come back to, to that again. With long life. So Psalms 91 is just back to back, side by side. Psalms 90, Psalms 91. It's like God is saying, all right, where do you want to live? Okay, if you live under the law, Psalms 90, and I tell you, they are, they are, Psalm 90 is a psalm by Moses, not David. Some people believe that Moses also wrote Psalms 91, but many people believe David wrote Psalms 91. Okay? But for sure, Moses wrote Psalms 90. He's talking about them in the wilderness when they were under judgment because they are supposed to travel 40 days and they are in the promised land. But instead, because of their rebellion, it took them 40 years. So these are the people. To prove to you they were under God's anger, which we are not under, Look at the proof of the context, all right? Context is always king. Never take the verse out of context. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. Can you see that? The context. Why are they living 70 to 80 years? Is it God's, God's will? No, they were under God's wrath. Okay, look at the sandwich. Even after that, okay? Below it says what? Who, know, who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. Can you see that? Can you see that? So is your wrath. So it's, it's sandwiched with wrath and anger. So the thing is this, the devil goes about as a roaring lion, I've shared before, impersonating God as being angry with you. His voice, and, and that is in my teaching, in my past teachings about, from the book of Proverbs, the uh, roaring of a lion is like the an anger of a king, okay? So, but it's not the King Jesus. He's going around impersonating that God is angry with you. Even the sense that God is angry with you can shorten your life. Uh, these are people under the law. These are people under the law. But we don't live 70, 80 years. We live with long life will I satisfy Him. Amen. That means you're not satisfied at 80. You want to be satisfied at 90. Go ahead. Amen. God's, God's criteria, God didn't say, it's my, my will is the criteria. God says, all right, my will is that your satisfaction. All right, if that is not enough, let me show you from the Bible. And this word, uh, uh, with long life will I satisfy Him. See the word satisfy? All right, it is the word saveh. Say saveh. Learn some Hebrew. Saveh. Saveh means satisfied. It is not, it's not always uh, full. The number one use of the word saveh is satisfied. The same word used in Psalms 103, verse 5. One of the blessings, amen, for the believer is God satisfieth your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Satisfy, saveh. So the word saveh, is satisfied. And it says uh, in, uh, at the end of Abraham's life, this is what he says. Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and satisfied with life. And he was gathered to his people. Satisfied with life. He didn't just die because he's old. He didn't just die because he lived a long life already. He was satisfied, folks. Satisfied. That's God's criteria. Amen. Are you listening? But pastor, what if it's God's will? God's word is God's will. God's will is in God's word. He does not will something for you that's not in His word. And these people say, you know, what is God's will for you? You ask them, what is God's will for you? And it's always something vague. You know, you got to fast 40 days to hear God's will. No, there are things, there are times and seasons we seek the Lord for things that are more specific. But these things are very clear. In the Word. God's Word is God's will. God's will is God's Word. Amen. Satisfied. Amen. The reason I show you NASB is because here's the problem. 
you, your King James and your new King James in this area is not very good because it says full of years or full of days. He died full of days or full of years in this case. Doesn't make sense. The word years is not even there. So NLT puts it like this, Abraham died at a ripe old age having lived a long and satisfying life. The word save, satisfied, must be there. So how about Abraham's son when he came to the end of his life? By the way, Abraham was 175 years old. His son, uh, Isaac, was uh, uh, I think 160 plus or something like that. He died. Isaac, uh, 180. Pastor Henry, Pastor Henry's memory is amazing. Uh, so he lived five years more than uh, his father. His father lived 175. Amen. 180 for Isaac, Abraham's son. Amen. We all know the forces that is natural in this world. They want us to stay natural. And the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. More and more church people are thinking like the world. When we are to be a supernatural people, we become naturalized. The devil himself is supernatural, but he wants you naturalized, confined to natural resources, natural sustain, sustenance, natural everything. Depend on your natural strength. That's why the law was written back then to bring forth man's natural strength. God purposely did that to show man he has none. Amen. Only we live by grace. Amen. So, the, the criteria, this word, see, full of days, New King James, full of days, it's not accurate. What do you mean, full of days? Oh God, many days long? Yeah, it's not. It's not correct in the, uh, in the Hebrew, it's the word saveh. Saveh used with long life, will I saveh him, satisfy him. Literally, satisfied. In fact, some places, it is, Oversatisfied, sati sati satiation, to the point of satiation. All right? Um, you know, when you feel like you ate too much and you, what? You know? That's what the Jews use in Hebrew. That's how they say, saveh, satisfied. Then you say, hmm. So all of them, only when they say, I'm satisfied, I want to go back to the Lord. Hear what I'm saying? So, Isaac being old and full of days. But here, the youngs is very accurate. The youngs bring up satisfied with days. Satisfied with days. So even Isaac was satisfied with days. Amen. David, David, the Bible says, he died in a good old age, full of days. Again, your new King James. But in the youngs, satisfied with days. Right. Job, Job, how about Job? The man who suffered so much, right? Look at Job's end. Job died old and full of days. What is full of days? Again, Satisfied with days. Satisfied with days. So when God says, with long life, will I satisfy you? The criteria is that your satisfaction, you must be satisfied. You want to go back or not? All right? It's not forced on you. Amen? So does that mean you won't be attacked with sickness and all that? No. But at least you know this, is it? You reject it in Jesus' name. If you have to go to the doctor, you go to the doctor knowing that this is not God's will. In fact, the doctor is there to tell you this must not be in your body. We'll do all we can to get it out of your body. Amen. Even by surgery, we'll do it. The doctor is on the same side as God. Amen. But don't accept it on that. Well, maybe it's God's will for me to have that. And then your, your, your theology is all messed up because when your child is sick, you will bring your child to the doctor first. Maybe God is teaching your child a lesson. Or you a lesson, right? If you believe that theory. No. As a father, you know theory, this is not right. But we live in a fallen world, you understand? So there'll be Christians dying. Of, we're not going to look at all that. And, because there is a generation, the Bible says, there'll be a life and remain when Jesus comes again. Okay? So let me go. I don't want to go ahead of myself. But so, so we understand that. We understand. So in, Job, uh, in Psalms 90, go back to Psalms 90, where we don't live in, but there is a word of wisdom in the midst of all these uh, uh, heavy verses, right? You drop down, look at this. Teach us the number of days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Some people act like they are living forever. But God is saying to you, number your days. So you become wise. Some people act like they live forever, you know? Right? Oh, you know. Ever, ever thought like when you were young, 30 years old is very old? Then you became 30. When you're younger, wow, 30 years old is old people already, you know. You hear the guy is 30 years old. Your mother is 30 years old. Right? Wow, very old already. Then you hit 30, you're like, it's not so old. I'm still very child, 
childish. <laughs> right? Then you think maybe 50 is old. Then you come to 50 years old and say, hey, I'm still learning. Eh? Right? Amen? Okay? So, how does a Christian look like? So, he, he's a person who, who's walk, who walks with wisdom. Last week, we learned about natural walking as well as walking spiritually. Our walk gets stronger and stronger. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. And regardless of what is in front of you, amen, just keep on walking in the Spirit. Walk on through the wind. Walk on through the rain. Do your dreams be tossed and blown? Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you never walk alone. You'll never walk. Where are all my supporters? Alone. Well, for those who don't know what happened, okay, there was Liverpool's song, okay? So we go right, keep on walking, keep on walking in the Spirit. Amen? And, and go back to the verse again. So teach, wait, teach, uh, go back to the verse, teach us the number of days. Do you know there's a, there's a calculator you can go online to calculate your days? How many days have you lived? I know many of you know what year you are right now, your age, right? You are 45 years old. I'm 45 years old, Pastor Prince. How many days have you lived? Huh? Right? There is a calculator. There's more than one, okay? You just key in your, your birth date, your birth year and all that. Your birth date and your birth year and it tells you exactly how many days you have lived. Just for the sake of this message, I, I've done it before and uh, some time back, but again, I said for this message, I'll just calculate again. Okay, guess what? This past week, my, 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 my days has been 22,000. On Tuesday, it's 22,000. So now today is 005 days. 22,000. And 22 for me is my ministry number. And here I'm teaching you about this, and I'm telling you it's 22,000. My son only 4,000 plus. <laughs> Think about it. Number your days. Be wise. Number your days. Realize days are passing by. And you thought, oh, I just now, you know, there's always, before you know it, they're grown up. It's not a cliche, you know, to say they grow up so fast. They grow up very fast. But there are those, for them, time seems to fly. And, and for some people, time drags so slow. Jacob served seven years for Rachel and there were but a few days for him because of his love for her. One of the most romantic verses in the Bible. Jacob's seven years passed by fast because of his love for Rachel. Number your days. So how do I go about doing this, Pastor? I don't want to miss any more time. I want to make use. I want every moment to be a Kairos moment, a fortunate moment, a good moment an opportunity. Amen. I want to see more of that. I don't want my time to just pass by before you know it, one week pass. One week pass. Pastors who are preaching, they know this. They know that before you know it, Sunday comes very fast. Sunday comes very fast. Amen. I'll tell you that. Don't you find it so? Amen. Even like you're planning for your holiday, before you know it, you're planning to come back from holiday. Right? <laughs> holiday just came and went. Right? Good days seems to come and go. So the Bible is telling you how to, literally, God can make days longer or shorter. Amen. Some you live like, wow, how come it's just past week? Some of you say, wow, I've been satisfied with this past week. Wow, this past month has been great. I'm satisfied. That's the kind of life. Satisfied with days. Amen. All right? Not just a long life. What's the point of having a long life? It's a miserable life. Amen? Are you with me so far? So how do I go about it, Pastor Prince? Let's, let's come right to it because of time. And uh, we see here, it tells us 
Therefore, do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. How can I know the will of the Lord specifically for me? Yes, from the Bible, you can get a general will of God, but specifically like who to marry, which, which uh, uh, school to, do, do I apply for, all right, for my further studies, and where, where do I, you know, what's my area of vocation? What is my calling, amen, in life? For all this, you want the easy way or the hard way to find out? I tell you, the hard way is like this. You gotta. Now, I'm not against fasting. When I fast, I don't tell people I'm fasting. But they tell you, you gotta fast, or kneel down, shut the door, pray, pray, pray until God speaks to you. Okay? I'm not knocking that. People are doing that. But I'm telling you, God's way, I always like to follow the word of God. The word of God is safe. All right? It doesn't tell me spend ye, New Testament, it doesn't say spend days and days in fasting in the New Testament written directly to you, to the church. What does it do? It tells you this. It tells you this. So how not to be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Go on. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is excess or dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you see? God is bringing all the messages that we've been hearing these past months together. Can you see or not? Giving thanks, rejoicing, a merry heart does good like medicine. Amen. It's all coming together. Wisdom. Amen. Solomon's wisdom especially. Talking about Solomon. All that wisdom and praise and songs are linked together. Look at this. He's been telling us, don't be unwise. Walk accurately. Buy back the Kairos moments. Snatch it. The world is trying to get it from you and turn it into days of evil, moments of evil. But God says, take the opportunity. Buy up the opportunity. Amen. How do you do it? By being filled with the Spirit. And you'll not be unwise. But understanding, this verse comes right after. Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So if you are filled with the Spirit, you just know when the right time comes for you to know the will of the Lord, you will just know. So the, the key is to be, to be being filled. Now I'm using the term in the Greek. It says, do not be drunk with wine in which is excess of dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So it's the same way a person drinking wine, for example, all right, where there's excess here it points to excess. Right? How does he act? He doesn't think about tomorrow anymore. Okay? He meets up with friends, got fellowship under the same tent. I tell you my problem, I tell you, you, you know, and then another cup. All the friends say, oh, you know. And I don't know why movies and all that is promoting this among our young people. That's the only way the world has, all right, recourse to. Sad. What's the solution to your mental health? Drink away your worries. Drink away. Your, just drink away. So God is saying, there's a better way. You see, your body, your inner person realizes there's something like wine that you need. But God is saying, what you really need is spiritual wine. You need the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the same symptom happened, you know, when someone is drunk, they don't worry anymore about their money, their finances, they, they are... Uh, if they are shy, they are now bold, it seems, you know. Of course, we know all this is negative, it's braggadocious, and, uh, uh, they, but they don't worry about tomorrow. Because the same things will happen when someone is filled with the Spirit, they are bold, amen, in a wonderful way. And then they are not worried anymore. They don't worry about tomorrow. They don't worry about their finances, their health. They're just not worried. But best of all, there's no hangover. Amen. Doesn't damage your liver. God says, but the term used here in the Greek is amazing. You know what it says, in, but be filled with the Spirit? It's literally the word, be being filled with the Spirit. It's a present tense, but the voice there is passive voice. Passive voice. You would have thought that being filled with the Spirit is active voice. You've got to keep yourself filled with the Spirit. No, your part is passive, which means there's something that you do actively. But being filled with the Spirit is passive. And yet, though it's passive, God says, I want you to constantly be receiving it. So the word down here, like I can say like this, be or allow yourself to continually being filled with the Spirit. 
That's the Greek word. Present tense, but active voice. Sorry, passive voice. Allow yourself. You know it's active, right? The boy hit the ball. Active. The boy, active. Right? The ball was hit by the boy. All right? The ball is in passive, passive mode, right? So here, being filled with the Spirit is passive on our part. Yet, we must allow it to happen. So what is the active part? Speaking to one another. Speaking there in the Greek is present active. Now, that's where you got to be active. You got to be active in the part of speaking. Do you see that? To being be filled with the Spirit. How many want to be full of the Holy Spirit the whole day? All day long? All day long? In fact, in Psalms 90, I told you, in the midst of all that, of that, all that darkness, right? In Psalms 90, uh, your days are 17 and 18 and all that. It teaches a number of days. You know, like, go back to that again. It actually goes down to tell you number of days, right? Next one. Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, Hasid, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. You want to be glad all your days? You want to be glad all your days? Early in the morning, satisfy yourself with God's grace. The word early is boker. Boker. You go to Israel, one of the things they teach you, Hebrew is what? Boker tov. Good morning. Tov is mo good. Boker is morning. So the word here is boker. Satisfy us early in the morning. Start the day right. Amen. Start the day right, enjoying His goodness. And guess what? All day, you'll be glad. Not just one day. Not just two days. All our days, you'll be glad. Start the day wrong and the day, you know, at the end, you're not satisfied. Pastor, five years have come and gone and I've wasted my life. That's what the Bible says. A day, do you know what the Bible says? One day in the house of God is worth a thousand outside. So the God values time. It's like people saying, I want to come back to the church. You know, the, I, honestly, every moment you have down here, the devil will try to give you some boredom and some feelings of, you know, uh, of banality about the thing or whatever, but be careful, it's a spiritual warfare. Those who are outside long to be here. So the true believers, whenever they are looking far away, they're on holiday and they look back at, online to see our church and all that, they wish they are there. If you're a true believer, you wish you were there. You feel lost, in a sense. You wish you were there. I know, I had to grab the railings and all that in my hotel room when I look at online and all that, you know, the church and all that. Ah, I want to be there. But I got to observe my sabbatical this year. That's the reason why I didn't go for sabbatical ever. It's my first time. At 22,000 days, I think it's good. Amen. So, it tells us Satisfy yourself. The word satisfy, there's what? Save, save, same word. Satisfy yourself, what? With God's grace. Amen. Early in the morning, in the word, singing to the Lord. In fact, you find singing to the Lord being featured very often, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. God, make your day full of joy. Kairos days. Hey, let's go on. Now, go back to Ephesians 5. It says, be being filled with the Spirit. It means allow yourself to be filled with the Spirit. And your part is to actively what? Speak. Speaking to yourself what? In Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. I'm not going to take too much time here just to tell you. Uh, don't worry about the order of it and all that. All that means spiritual songs. Songs about uh, the kingdom of God. Songs about the Lord. Songs that are Christian songs. As far as we are concerned. The word Psalms is actually, the, the word Psalms is from the book of Psalms. Hymns are songs written, all right, even in Paul's time, right, written by the inspiration of the Spirit. Today, we have songs written in, by the inspiration of the Spirit. Okay? And then, uh, spiritual songs, praying, singing, singing in tongues, those are spiritual songs. The Bible says, these are the things you have to do actively, and guess what? You are being filled with the Spirit. Well, I thought you got to stay down there and wait for hours and all the whole thing. No, God says, if you're driving to work, start singing. Start singing. But, but I can't sing, Pastor Prince. It says to you, it says to you here, speaking songs. <laughs> you cannot sing. Can you speak songs? God is so merciful, you know. He's speaking spiritual songs, speaking hymns, speaking psalms. Can you do that? 
and no one is listening to you anyway. Right? As you're driving to work, sing. Sing a simple chorus. You don't like some songs, you don't feel like it's quite complicated, I can't remember everything. Sing the song we sang just now. That's why I brought it up just now. Thou art my God and I will praise Thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for... Now that song, give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His mercy and yours forever, comes in the Scriptures again and again and again. Jehoshaphat sang that song when he was surrounded by the enemies. Enemies outnumbered him and Judah, all right? And when he sang that song, he sang praises singing this song with these words. The enemies fought among themselves. And Jehoshaphat and his men had three days of picking up the spoils of war. The gold and the silver and the sundial Rolex on all the hands of the enemies. Three days. And you know what they call the valley? Baraka. The valley of blessing. Baraka. Valley of blessing. So speak to yourself, Psalms. When you're speaking to yourself, singing to yourself, all right? Singing to yourself. It's not for anyone else to hear. It's just for you to hear. When you come together, it's for everyone else. Amen? But people think that, that uh, singing songs is just, uh, you know, just give vent to your expression, you know, as a Christian. No, it's vital for your spirit-filled life. You know, a merry heart, the Bible says, it's not just laugh at nothing. Or the world's mirth, which the Bible says, is like crackling of thorns. The sound is not very nice, crackling of thorns. Right? But the joy of the Lord, really, this singing to yourself, is, and, you know, during my, my time by myself, I'll tell you this, I, I, I learned so much from the Lord about singing to, 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 uh, to yourself. I find that in any situation where previously I'll be more short-tempered, maybe irritated with something, I find I'm, I can flow. I can be in a good disposition. Amen. In fact, if you keep on reading Ephesians, it drops down all the way, not just the giving thanks, but wives submit to your husband. And then drop down, it says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Do you see that? And that is, is the oil. Is the oil in your marriage relationship. And then it drops down to uh, children obey your parents, fathers and children, how to treat your children. But first of all, you, you must keep yourself being filled with the Spirit. And then it's got to do with wisdom, right? We read just now, right? Walk as wise, understanding what the will of the Lord is. It's tied up with wisdom. When you're filled with the Spirit, you're filled with wisdom. Your, your life becomes a life, like what we said for the past weeks. You're not a type A personality. So you try to find from the world or from YouTube or from somewhere online, how does a Christian look like? No, this is the picture here, right here. Keep on singing. On the road, you hear us illustrating a lot from the road because the road is really the place of church out there. <laughs> the, where the rubber meets the road, literally. <laughs> Amen? What if you sing? You start singing first. And then someone just something, right? you're fine, you're still in the flow. It's easy. Now, I know you can pray in tongues as well, but actually the word speaking, praying in tongues is not here. It's implied, but it's not here. Spiritual songs there is most likely praying in tongues, singing in tongues, all right? But it says, speak to yourself in psalms, hymns. How many psalms do you know? Psalms like, thy loving kindness, just now I mentioned to you, thou art my God, is taken from the psalms. Learn a simple chorus. Amen. And sing it. But what if I don't mean it, Pastor? Keep on singing it. And you are being filled with the Spirit. And when you are being filled with the Spirit, you will, you will understand what the will of the Lord is. You will walk as wise. You will buy back all those Kairos moments. Are you listening, people? You know, the Bible says that God gave wisdom to Solomon. And this is the kind of wisdom God gave Solomon. It says that God gave Solomon wisdom, exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. I've told you all before, right, that it's not enough to have wisdom. You must have a big heart, largeness of heart. Because people with wisdom can take advantage of people. But you must have a big heart. Big heart alone with no wisdom is of no use. Money gone. People borrow. Never mind. Nah, never, you know, it's, it's not that. You got to be wise. You got to have both. But look at this. Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than all men, than Ethan, than Haman, Kalkal, Darda. So first of all, it tells you he was wiser than all the men of the East. 
all the men, the men of the East that lived during his time in China, India, all the Far East wise men, right? Solomon is wiser than them. And we have many wise men among them. God didn't say they are foolish. God said they are wise men. But Solomon excelled their wisdom. And he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, Haman, Kalkal, Darda, the sons of Mahal. This is very interesting. Do you know who are they? They are actually the worship leaders in, the ta- in, in his father David's tabernacle. Solomon's father is David and his tabernacle has all these worship leaders. All right, and they are Ethan, Haman, Kalkal, Darda. Now, first of all, how do you get filled with the Spirit? You just sing to yourself. Thy loving kindness is better than life. On your way to an interview or presentation or meeting someone, thy loving kindness is better than life. Not only it fills you with the Spirit, it sets you in the right key. Even though your, your song, you're singing in the wrong key. Thank God God is speaking. Amen? If you do that, you'll flow with your husband, you'll flow with your wife, you'll flow with your children, and God bless you. There'll be wisdom just being there, just knowing what to do. Not knowing what the interview holds, not knowing how to present something, not knowing what's ahead of you as you counsel someone. All right, on your way there as you sing in the Spirit. But not just for moments like this, all day long. Sing. Martin Luther says that Besides the Word of God, the greatest gift God gave man is the gift of music. It drives the devil mad, he says. Good music, godly music. Amen. I mean, you hear the music, it's like, oh man, it goes right deep in your soul. Well, those things, those songs that you like or whatever, use it. Have a few ready for the day. Start satisfying yourself early in the day. And all day long, you'll be satisfied with that day. Praise God. Are you with me so far? One time there was a a man of God, and uh, his name is Elisha, and he was in a bad mood. He's a prophet, he's supposed to prophesy, but he was in a bad mood. Okay, so what happened? The king of Israel cut an alliance, all right? They they had a a deal between themselves. But the king of Judah is a good king, Jehoshaphat. But the king of Israel, Jehoram at that time, was a bad king. So anyway, Jehoshaphat says, before we go to war, he told the king, I'd like to hear a prophet of God. Being a godly man, he said, I'd like to hear a prophet of God. Then he says, ah, this guy, the only one is Elisha. So bring him here. So Elisha came in. Elisha looked at the king of Israel. This is what Elisha said. Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I will not even look at you. (laughs) Because of King Jehoshaphat, he told the king of Israel, I won't even look at your face. But I show him face, not you. (laughs) It sounds like the man of God is in a bad mood. (laughs) Does that encourage you? Does it sound like he's not in a good flow? You're asking this man to prophesy? He knows he's not in the flow. So what does he do? The first word. Now bring me a musician. Elisha says, bring me a musician. And what, see what happened. Then it happened when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And thus says the Lord, he says, make this valley full of ditches. Make deep, lots of holes. Amen. Make this valley full of ditches. And then they stand back. God sent water to fill up the ditches. Because his army, is, the army of uh, Israel and Judah were about to die of thirst, let alone fight the enemy. And this is the answer. But note how the hand of the Lord came upon him. That's why I, I love to worship God even before ministering in the Spirit. It takes time, you know, for, for us. But it's a simple thing because I cannot depend on myself. We are depend on the Lord. But, being, but making you all sing as well, you are being filled. And then when we are all filled, guess what? The flow is so easy. Are you listening, people? Okay, I want to bring this to a close, okay? So watch this now. Um, Let's go back to uh, Solomon's men that I mentioned just now. Why did I mention them? He was wiser than all men. Then all these names are mentioned, and we know there's no no, uh, redundant uh, mention of names in the Bible. All these people are brothers, by the way, just let you know. They're all from, they're all grandsons of, you know who? Judah. 
And the mother's name, Tama, if you remember the story. Tama and Judah, daughter-in-law actually. And from the line came Jesus Christ. But tr not through tr their, uh, their father, through their uncle, Perez. Their father is Zara from Tama and Judah. So they are from the tribe of Judah. Judah means praise. And God always says, whenever there's trouble, enemies in front, let the tribe of Judah go first. What is that saying? Offer praise. Offer praise. There's a true story of a man. His name is uh, Mr. Frank Foglio, an Italian pastor. He wrote the book uh, that's widely read many, many years ago called Hey God, right? And uh, he, how he found God in a very supernaturally natural way. And um, uh, his daughter, his young daughter, probably at the time about early 20s or late teens, had an accident, terrible accident where her brain was damaged. And then um, she was put in a, in a hospital and then there's no cure, nothing. And they put her in a special home uh, for people with uh, uh, mental issues and mental health issues and all that. And, and the father visited her faithfully. He always visited her. Then not only that, her condition grew worse and worse. So they put her in a special room all the way inside. All right? And the father went on going every, I forgot, every other day or every uh, day. But he, he would go and visit the daughter. And, and one day as he got on there, his heart got a bit angry with God. He said, God, you could have prevented this. He just complained to God. And God says, praise me. Praise you. He said, no way. For this kind of thing, no way. And God says, praise me. He refused. Then he went on further, do all the preliminaries to check in. And then he went on to a first room. And then he says, God says to him, praise me. His heart began to melt a little bit. Then when he stepped forward to the inner room where his daughter was specially kept. And the daughter doesn't know anyone. She's gone. Doesn't know where she is. And she's acting like, you know, someone who is completely deranged. All this visit, he said, God, early on, he said, God, why, why am I visiting? She doesn't even recognize me. And right before her door, God said again, praise me. And he says, God, I praise you. I don't understand what's happening, but I praise you. And right inside, there was a shout. I want my father. I want my daddy. I want my daddy. The door flung open. The daughter looked at one look at the father and the, he rec she recognized him. She ran to him, hugged him. The miracle was so, so amazing that the very next week, she was standing in church with the father, completely sound. I've heard and I've read of testimonies of men and women of God that have seen amazing miracles just by praising. And there's another one, Justin Cornwall's brother, um, where his brother is trained in psychiatry and he was looking for a part-time job at a time before he went on further studies, something like that. And uh, he actually was given a job in a mental uh, asylum. So he went to this uh, place and he asked the Lord what he should do. So they gave him a special assignment and in this room where all the, the patients were were there, they were all people who had lost their minds. And there was, there was all kinds of filth and excrement on the wall, on the floor. And he just, gonna, he just went on there and said, Lord, what shall I do? And the Lord said to him, sit down and praise me. All right? So, and they were all circling him like vultures, you know, when he sat in the center. They all went around him and all that. And he just... That was his session. He has a few hours he spent down there. That was his session. He sits down there. He just starts singing, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. Nothing happened. They went around him. They got curious to look at him and all that. And they all with that kind of eyes and all that. I think he left. The next day he came back again for his session. He said, Lord, what shall I do? Lord said, do the same thing. He sang, Jesus loves me. This I know. And again, again, right? No reaction, nothing. The third time he went for his session, sat down in the midst, he starts saying, Jesus loves me, this I know. Then someone continued, For the Bible tells me so. Then another one continued, Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. There are a few more people. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
Yes, Jesus loves me. And the whole place reverberate with God's praise. A long story short, there were about, I forgot, 40, 50 people there. All of them were dismissed after that. Some longer time, some lesser time, but all were dismissed except for two or three. That to me is an amazing testimony. Just a simple chorus. And yet we despise singing. We despise, ah, it's a small thing and all that. No, just singing all day and all that. No, no, no. That's why, you, that's why you're so bad tempered. That's why you're so stressful. It's hurting your heart. You are stressed. And uh, you find the burdens get, get heavier when you, are, when you are in that kind of mode, right? But when you sing, something just lifts. Amen. In these last days, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with these last days, okay? Praise the Lord, okay? Are you all okay? You see, we're putting all, it all together, no? Merry heart, giving thanks for all things, right? Just sing to God. Thank God in your song. Okay, in the last days, we are in the last days, okay? We are in the last days. God hides secrets in the last days. What about provision? I think, I, yeah, I forgot to give you the names. The names of this man, David, yeah. Very quick, Ethan means like a, like a perennial flowing river. The picture of a river ever flowing. His name is ever flowing. Isn't that what uh, Ephesians 5 tells us? Keep on speaking, ever flowing. Keep on speaking and you are ever being filled. Perennially flowing. Always flowing, ever flowing. That's the name Ethan. All right, the name Haman is faithful. Amen. Be faithful in doing that. Calcol, very interesting. What does calcol mean? Calcol means to be provided for, to be supplied. Isn't that interesting? The first time to be provided, this root word of calcol, this is a name, a name. All of them are brothers, by the way. Their, their, their grandparents are Tamar and Judah. All right, and, and calcol, the, the root word of call came from the first occurrence is when Joseph told his brothers, come near me. I'll put you in the land of Goshen. Goshen means the place of drawing near. Literally, Goshen drawn near. I'll show you the verse. <laughs> you shall dwell in the land of Goshen drawing near. You shall be near me. I'm speaking prophetically to many of you who are concerned about the, uh, the, the media report and all the news report you've been observing and looking at for the past week. Do not be afraid of what is befalling uh, the earth. Amen. What's coming to Singapore, whatever it is, do not be afraid. Look at God's news. Don't look at the world's news and go by your, your spirit is, is, is uh, uh, taking the color and the taint of that. Make sure you get your, your inspiration and your, your spirit from the scriptures. Literally, it's a spirit, <laughs> being filled with the spirit. Amen. Are you listening? Joseph, our heavenly Joseph, is saying, Come to the land of Goshen. Goshen means draw near. You shall be near to me and your children, your children's children your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There, I'll provide for you. This is the word Kalkol, call. The root word is from here. Where the name Kalkol comes from. Lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, for there are still five years of famine. So in the midst of famine, in the midst of famine, when you hear the news, remember this verse. I had to put this verse down. I, I wanted you to be blessed by this verse. I believe God is put this verse in my heart to tell you it is a word for the now. Draw near to Jesus by singing to Him. Amen. Your loving kindness is better than life. Amen. Draw near. There, the place of drawing near. There, where, where, there, where, there. Right? Not any other place. There, the place of nearness to Jesus, I will provide for you. For you and your children. Whatever you need, in the midst of famine, even though right now there's still five more years of famine, he says, you'll be provided for. Amen. So back to the uh, uh, names again. And Darda, the sons of Mahor. You know what's Darda? Pearl of wisdom. Didn't we say that praise and all these are worship leaders, by the way. They're all worship leaders. And it seems like worship, praise, singing to the Lord is closely tied up with wisdom. Yeah. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Dada, the sons of Mahal. Mahal means dance. Right? And his fame was in all the surrounding nations. Solomon spoke 3,000 proverbs. His songs were 1,005. We're in the last days. And let's go to Isaiah 60 for the last 
passage. Arise, shine. Say, arise, shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Deep darkness, the people, the Lord will arise over you. His glory will be seen upon you. It's something that the world can see on you. In these last days, I'm going to finish this real fast. Drop down. The Gentiles will come to your light. Non-Christians will come to your light. We know Gentiles means non-Jews in the context here, but every prophecy, listen, every prophecy, there are, there, are, there are two sides to it. The near fulfillment and the far fulfillment, always. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, he says, this is that which prophet Joel spoke of. That, that is a near fulfillment, amen? But Joel also spoke about the end time when Jesus come back again. So there's a dual fulfillment, near and future. All right, so watch this. Gentiles shall come to your light. These are non-Christians, they'll come to your light and change to the brightness of your rising. When will this happen? When darkness covers the earth. Christian, your light will shine brighter. Amen. They'll see you singing. Amen. Amen. Even under your breath. Sometimes it's not possible to sing out loud. Sing under your breath. Amen. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. There'll be salvation. People will gather themselves. It used to be like, we go out there and find people. Now they will gather themselves and they will come to you. Amen. Because of the light on you. Amen. And your children that are rebellious, it's a picture of like a prodigal son. Your sons will come from far like the prodigal son. They'll come home. Your sons shall come from far. And your daughters will be nursed at your sight. Amen? Okay, then you drop down. God is telling us. Then you shall see and become radiant. Your heart shall swell with joy because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Now this figurative speech now. The Bible uses figurative speech or something. You better know. That means what? Abundance of the sea. Sea is always a picture of mankind. There'll be a landslide, salvation, harvest in the end time. But watch this. The wealth of the Gentiles will come to you. I'm just reading the Bible. I, uh, you want to say something against me? Just say hello. I'm just reading the Bible. And it says it will happen in the end times. Just like the last plague. You know the last plague? The death of the firstborn. On the same night, what happened? Israel came out with gold and silver. Yeah. All the back pay. All the, they have been cheated off. They came out with silver and gold. Alright? I'm just reading the Bible. The end of what God does is always just gold and silver. Why? The gold and silver is not to build a golden calf. It's how, how you use it. It's to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. Okay? Now, it says here, drop down. Therefore, your gate shall be open continually. Your gates must be open continually. People! Your gates must be open continually. There is a, a, a distant fulfillment when Jesus returns and there is a literal gate, literal uh, city when Jesus returns, but there's a near fulfillment. Truth for us. What's the truth? What's your gate? Your gate must be open. Why? They shall not be shut day or night that man may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. The unbelievers and their kings in procession. So how to open the gate, Pastor? Let's find out what's the gate. Drop down and I'll close with this verse. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. You know what's your wall? Your wall is literally in the Hebrew here, Yeshua. You will call your walls Yeshua. So it's like we are all in Christ. Am I right? We are surround, like, all encompassed with Christ. We are all in Christ. Can I have a good amen? amen? We are all in Christ, right? But God is saying, your gate. The Bible says in more than one place, set a door on my lips. Door. It calls it a door. It calls it a gate. Let your gates be open what? How often? Continually. Look at the previous verse again. Let your gates be open continually. Why? that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. And not only wealth, there'll be salvation. Those people bringing the wealth, they are kings, they are the VIPs in this world. They'll come in. If you praise. We found the secret of the gates. You came in just to learn that we are blessed with it. Okay? Amen? Amen. So have a song in your heart. Stand to your feet. Have a song in your heart that you've memorized. Maybe it's a book of Psalms. Maybe it's a song that we wrote. I see grace. Amen. Something that you 
enjoy singing, get two or three songs under your belt, and throughout the day, here and there, sing. When you're tempted to get angry, sing. Sing under your breath or make melody in your heart if you cannot sing out loud. Because in singing, it's no small thing. You are being filled with the Spirit. You are being filled with wisdom as well. And God, God wants it ever flowing. Amen? And your relationship with your spouse will be just oiled. Amen. Smooth. It won't be creaky. There will, there will be no friction because the oil is there. Praise God when you are singing the Spirit. It's a simple truth. Anyone ask you, what did Pastor Prince be? Sing song. <laughs> Lift your hands all across this place. Thou art my God, and I will praise Thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy and Your wrath forever. If you're going to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ right now, you have never done so, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess You as my Saviour, as my Lord, as my God. And I believe You rose from the dead when I was acquitted, justified in You. Thank You for dying for my sins. Thank You that You're alive today from the dead to be my shepherd, to be my Lord. I'm saved. In Jesus' name, Amen. And friend, with that song, go out of here, make it your homework. Amen. Sing as often as you can. Not necessarily the song, any song that God puts on your heart, okay? Love you all. God bless. And you'll never walk alone. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. But don't go just yet. If you'd like to receive prayer, share your testimony, or find out more about Gospel Partner, just click the link on this screen. If not, I'll see you in the next episode.